What's happening guys, this is James Blon with MMOHUD.com with a first look at Panzar, a team-based free-to-play action MMO with a few RPG elements from the guys over at Panzar Studio. And as of a few days ago, the game launched in Europe and is available in French, German, and English. Now the game isn't supposed to be released in North America, but you can hop on their website and download the English clients to check it out yourself. Anyway, so uh, when you first start up the game, the game has you select from these eight classes, starting with the Berserker here is actually one of the classes that I'll be showing in gameplay. And so obviously the Berserker is going to be your damage dealer. It's going to have a high amount of damage with low attack speed. The game kind of gives you an overview of the class right down here. This is the best thing to look at. The difficulty is easy for him to use, and it kind of gives you a little preview of some of the skills that he's uh, capable of doing. And uh, these are going to be later on. Now the tank here is going to have the uh, skill of invulnerability. He actually kind of surrounds himself with this magical wall that, that reflects damage. Obviously he's defense. And here are some of his stats as well. The damage is still medium. So he's a pretty good uh, class probably to start out with for new players. The Paladin, obviously being the support class, is capable of healing all your teammates, and you'll notice that it's very important to have one of these on your team whenever you're uh, playing. You don't really get a choice because the game kind of pits you into a match with a bunch of random players, and so you're hoping that you have people healing you. Because the only other way to heal yourself, including if you're a Paladin, is to use health potions, which I'll talk about later. Uh, you either have to purchase those or craft them. So here we have the Inquisitor, which is basically an assassin with the ability to become invisible. Now that is useful for sneaking around and uh, capturing points or just assassinating some of the big guys that you need to get off your other teammates so they can go ahead and capture the points and uh, it's interesting because they have the ability to see weak enemies now you'll notice that when we get into gameplay that nobody has a health bar over their heads or anything like that you can't actually tell who is weak and who isn't but the inquisitor can actually do that the sapper is a pretty cool support class that has the ability to drain enemies of uh, magic which is pretty effective against some of the casters as well as provide altars that buff their allies they can also construct devices that let their teammates teleport to key locations like if you're trying to capture a point or hold a point then they can construct their team buff altars and place mines to help that keep that point secure and uh, keep enemies off of it so this is definitely the class to play if you're looking for that sort of strategy now the gunner class looks absolutely badass in game because his primary weapon is a huge like stationary cannon like a big turret so you always see him they always construct this like way off in the distance because he's definitely a ranged uh, a attacker he doesn't do a whole lot of damage but he definitely keeps the heat on uh, the, the, the target that you're going for if you're trying to capture a point there's always gunfire like just blasting into there so you always having to have a tank to uh, to use his invincibility to reflect that damage. The Frost Witch is another support class. Now she has a unique ability to run into all of the damage dealers and tanks and everything and just use a spell to just freeze everybody. Now when she does that then you have all the berserkers come in there and do all their the uh, the damage and you have the inquisitors come in there and do all the damage. So she is a uh, support class that essentially sets up uh, for the initiation of recapturing a point. And that's basically what she's used for. There's a lot of uh, players I noticed in game using her. Now the Sister of Fire is a, another ranged combat. She deals uh, with shooting a lot of like fireballs from a distance. She doesn't have a whole lot of health, but she can do quite a bit of damage by constantly bombarding you with uh, fireballs from a distance that catch you on fire and do damage over time. Really the only way to deal with her is to either be behind a tank or get an Inquisitor to go out there and be stealthy and kill her. Alright, so we're going to go with my Berserker. I've already created this one. It's uh, Booger. And uh, I went through the tutorial and played a couple of matches just to kind of get an idea for the game. Now the tutorial is really... It's useful because it tells you how to play, but it doesn't actually tell you the mechanics of the game, like the game modes that the that the game actually has. Like, you don't necessarily know exactly how capturing works. But let's go ahead and take a look at the forge here, and I'll talk about a little bit more about that as we get into the game. This is where you uh, craft items. Now, I am assuming you get recipes from playing matches here. And so these are recipes, I guess, to craft better weapons and better gear. This is kind of the RPG element uh, to the game. I don't have enough resources here to craft that. I don't think I have enough resources for hardly anything. Like I said, I haven't played a whole lot of matches. Uh, let's see, if, like the gun butt there, I guess uh, you would make something for the gunner at that point. I'm not sure exactly what this is for, but later on in the game, you'll be able to add gear to your player. And see, these are the resources that I'm gathering as I play matches. Now, these are runes. Obviously, runes are the same uh, as any other game. You can actually add these to gear, and it will, uh, let's see, like this right here. 
It's got gives me health as this as one of the stats and this right here if I provide this it's going to increase my health and so let's see here so my health went up you can actually see in my stats and it gave me a 1.4 percent health increase which isn't a which isn't a lot obviously if I put that rune on a uh, higher level piece of gear it's probably gonna do better like this one here gives me mana and this one gives me more energy so it depends on what you're looking for in terms of uh, your class you're playing I suppose I'm not sure if those runes are shared across your classes or not but if not you can obviously sell them for gold and uh, use that for purchasing other things so let's go ahead and take a look at the altar the altar is essentially your skill tree now after the tutorial it lets you pick one of these um, and I went ahead and went with uh, frenzy and frenzy or actually it gave me frenzy I went with the other one uh, which I'll tell you in a second. Now, Frenzy basically go, lets you go berserk and increases your attack speed, and uh, but it consumes mana. Now, mana isn't really that big of a deal for this particular character as our class as a berserker. The berserker is not going to use a whole lot of mana, so it's not that big of a deal. Plus, you can pop a uh, mana potion and deal with it that way. Each one of the classes seems to have some sort of ranged weapon. This one is uh, basically he throws like these uh, exploding rocks. It's kind of interesting, but it's very helpful if you cannot reach a control point and you're wanting to take out some of the enemies. Now this next one here is called Sucker Punch, and it's supposed to be pretty useful, but I uh, haven't actually got to mess with it. It drains 300 energy from an enemy, and it also allows you to block uh, or actually interrupt spell casting from some of those like casters and things like that, like especially the Frost Lady. And so obviously the fitting room is where you can customize your character. Now most of this is going to be uh, cash shop related because there's nothing I can actually customize right this second uh, without actually paying gold. And if I don't have enough gold, I can exchange this for shard or I can actually go in here and buy shard. And you have to do that with real money. Now shard and gold can actually help you purchase your healing potions and things like that in games, your consumables. Uh, but like I said, you can uh, acquire gold while playing the matches like I've got 133 based off of the uh, matches that I've played so let's go ahead and get into a match and we'll talk a little bit more about that and I'll show you the gameplay alright guys so here we are in gameplay I'm actually standing in the middle here trying to take control oh no I'm getting frozen oh I gotta get away from that frozen and there's t man I'm kinda like by myself <laughs> oh, I gotta hit these power hit these orcs so I'm in the middle of a domination map, and that right there is the middle control point, and oh man, oh wow, we killed each other. Crazy. Oh yeah, healing me now doesn't really help me. That's okay. So yeah, that, that is the center control point, and when somebody's standing in that control point, uh, there's my gunners over there. When somebody's standing in that control point, uh, you get points for your team, but if one member of each team is standing in that control point, I'm going to use my power up here then neither team actually gets points. So here's their enemy tank, which I'm going to try to... Ooh, nice. I hit him. He uh, must have led up there. And then, thank you, I've got this guy healing me. And I've got my invisible inquisitor there. I can kind of see him. So anybody with a flag on their back is an enemy. Like, And obviously, the, oh no, don't freeze me. That's what I'm talking about. Good, good. So they, oh no, they're still attacking me. See, I don't have any help. I need some help. So when that lady freezes you, basically you're kind of screwed if um, there's other members of their team up there bashing on you because that is something, she pretty much knocks you out of uh, commission there. So yeah, the, we're the red team. Any of you guys with the flags on their back is blue team. Obviously they have uh, little blue accents as well, but I'm trying to uh, block here. You use control to block. I actually macroed that out to my mouse and it seemed to be a little bit easier than hitting control to block. Ah, you stupid freezing lady. See, I am blocking right now, so I'm still not taking as much damage, but I really got to get out of here. There's way too many enemies. Hopefully I can do a little bit of damage now that I have my power attacks. See, you have this main yellow bar here that uh, allows you to do these power attacks, but at the same time it allows you to... I'm not letting this guy get away. Oh, he hurt me bad. It's at the same time, the power attack, your stamina bar here is also uh, has to do with your running. So you want to try to balance it out between doing your power attacks, which consumes most of that, and uh, running away. But running can save your life. Get out of my circle. Thank you. And so obviously right there, the red bar is my health, which is going down because this guy's beating me a little bit. Uh, good thing my healer's there to help me out there. Not the freezing lady. No. See, I, I'm going to free. Oh. What even happened there? I think I got hit by another orc. And he took me down to half health. So uh, hopefully my healer's around. But I think I'm going to go ahead and take a healing potion since I've got a lot of those. And now my healer's there. Oh well. 
That's okay. So my blue bar there is my mana, which I only use if I use friends. What the heck happened? I just died randomly. <laughs> I was blocking the whole time, but I guess, I don't know. Weird. I hate dying from full health. That sucks. Just randomly. But yeah, my blue bar is my mana, and so if I use Frenzy, which I'll actually use here in a second. Right there. Okay, so Frenzy increases my attack speed and uh, lets it lets me recover a little bit quicker so I can swing because I swing really slow otherwise. Uh, sometimes you can't tell if, uh, if you hit them or not, and if there's too many enemies, a lot like a MOBA, if there's a lot of enemies around, you're kind of screwed, you might want to run. So I'm going to take a, uh, an energy potion there, energy drink. Get rid of this freezing lady. Thank you. I killed her. Goodness. Because she seems to be the, the threat here. And this guy too. So I'm going to be blocking a lot. And then I die again. But at least we're still winning. And so essentially what I'm trying to do is try to remain in the circle here and get everybody out of the circle if I can. As a berserker, I'm going to initiate and try to kick everybody out and hopefully have the support of a healer and possibly like, like this little guy. I guess he's standing in there getting some... Uh, <laughs> He's standing in the middle getting points for that team, but what usually happens is a lot of the teammates will get distracted and not be in the center. So that's the prime um, spot to basically get all the points you can get. No, I'm getting frozen. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to run. I'm going to fall down here to get away. And uh, I guess I go ahead and take one of these potions to refill my energy. There you go. And that way I have fresh power attack to bash on these guys. Nice, I hit him even w oh, I hit him while he was taking a health potion, so that's such a waste because, uh, like I said, you probably have to purchase those health potions. I think there's actually, um, uh, what's it called, recipes to craft them, but I'm sure it takes a lot to get that, so it's a waste. <laughs> All right, go back into Frenzy, and uh, let's see here. I'm going to go, oh, crap, we got a lot of people, and I'm getting frozen again, and see, I have no help from any of, well, that guy, the, the Inquisitor was in there. But yeah, we're getting all frozen like that, so basically I'm useless unless unless somebody takes out that freezing lady, which is not going to happen before I die. So you can see how effective the various classes can be if they're played right. <laughs> so their, their team has a nice um, support class freezing lady that knows exactly what she's doing to help them out. And... Um, you know, it, like it is random, so when you get into a match like that, you don't know exactly who is being matched up. So you might have, you may have five gunners, and you're definitely not going to win without like a tank and, and that sort of thing. So sometimes you do have to cross roles. Like uh, there may be instances when there's a lot of these uh, uh, berserkers. Oh crap! The physics are awesome. No, I'm I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to, uh, to to survive a little bit. Get to where I can. No, heal me. So you can call for a medic by hitting X, and uh, sometimes that works, sometimes your your teammates listen to you, but that's definitely not always the case. Oh my gosh, I blew that guy all the way across the map, and died afterwards. But yeah, sometimes when you're not in the right situation, and there's like a lot of berserkers, for example, then uh, you may want to use your Kern skill, which I'll actually show you here in a second, where you can throw these uh, explosive rocks from a distance, and try to play effectively that way to clear out the people in the circle, and then go ahead and capture that point. So that's what I'll do next. I'll basically try to get around over here on the side and kind of camouflage myself and see if I can't uh, throw some rocks into their their party over there. Kind of take out some of their gunners would be the best thing for me to do. See, at short range it doesn't really work, but see, I can aim it. Now that takes a little bit more of my energy. Uh, this one does more damage than my typical like regular attack, but I can throw it on some of their teleporters so that it, it kind of reduces their time frame in which they. Oh no, this guy! I didn't notice him. <laughs> now I get it back. So I have to switch back to my other mode, and I'm gonna get frozen here because they are very good at the strategy. This guy's gonna finish me off. Usually, what happens is when an orc or berserker hits you, you fly off from a distance. They run up to you and they use your power attack to finish you off because it only takes two power attacks from a berserker to pretty much finish anybody off. But then again, like I said, you don't see anybody's health bars, so you just something you have to get used to, you kind of figure out. The dwarfs, uh, or basically you can study whether or not the uh, various classes have high or low health. So.
go back into frenzy here and definitely not throwing any more bombs and try to sneak up on this guy but he's just a little bit too far no not the freezing lady again see now we're all frozen there's not really anything going on because she's not doing any damage but then again her friends come over here and start attacking us and see that right there is just a flaw in our teamwork now i'm gonna smash this guy and kill him nice I gotta get away from this freezing lady or she gets killed and now I'm gonna run off and heal because that's the prime <laughs> The prime thing to do right now. This guy's healing me not healing me fast enough because I definitely want to go in there All right now We're gonna head back towards the middle because that's where we need to be because they are winning now need some energy Let's do this get some mana make sure my frenzy's up and Get frozen probably <laughs> Oh nice. I smacked that guy off that direction it was had a delay to it. Oh crap. Oh, I'm still alive, but I get to, to die shortly after. <laughs> We're losing because of the mage. That's what everybody's talking about. So another thing that's random and I don't necessarily like about the game is that it randomly chooses the game mode for you. There are four game modes. This one's uh, domination. There's like a capture. Um, there's meteor mode and uh, one other game mode. Oh yeah, King of the Hill. And basically, it's all random, so w once you enter a match, you just hit play and enter a match. There's no like choosing a lobby or anything like that. Man, that's a lot of enemies. And uh, then you just get put into a game and you may not know exactly what mode you're playing. And on top of that, the uh, tutorial is, like I said earlier, is nice for showing you how to play, but the problem with it is uh, it doesn't really tell you anything about the game modes gotta get away from taking damage here there's so many enemies I don't even know where the rest of my team is um, but yeah it doesn't teach you anything about the game mode like uh, some of them are actually pretty interesting and it oh, we lost it takes a while to kind of figure out what you're supposed to do in the game mode like I didn't actually realize that I wasn't getting any points for my team when there were enemies inside a little circle at the same time now that can be kind of a given but, you know, there's no indication in the game what it is. There's also no sort of, like, explanation of anything on your UI. So that's a little bit odd, but oh well. And so you can see here, I leveled up just a little bit, and uh, yeah, so I got my rewards, and that's pretty much it. Overall, the game seems heavily focused on the visuals and not the actual overall gameplay. The, the visuals are absolutely crisp. It's almost like they took a bunch of 3D graphic guys and threw them in a room and said, Make a game. Go. Now, the RPG element in the game is neat, but as of right now, I really can't tell how long it's actually going to take for me to craft new gear for my warrior. There's not really any sense of direction there. I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, the game doesn't tell you. There's no sort of guidance in the game uh, for the crafting system. The tutorial basically shows you how to move, and that's about it. And uh, there's not really any information on the game mode. So you get into the game mode, you have to play it a couple times before you realize what you're supposed to be doing. And meanwhile, your team is just yelling at you, asking you why you aren't doing that. It almost seems like the only real help you can get is uh, just resorting to information you can find online after digging a while. And the game claims to be launched, but I really feel that it's in a perpetual beta, sort of like Arcblade, and that they're constantly adding and tweaking the game. So maybe later on, once they've added a lot more to the game, or change the systems up, you know, drastically, I guess, uh, then the game could be pretty cool. Because right now, the game is really buggy, you know. For example, I had to reinstall the game after my first attempt to play, just because it wouldn't get past the first loading screen without crashing. And uh, after that, the game continued to crash at various times and made it actually really difficult to do any sort of recording. I even tried playing the game for a while not recording, and um, that didn't really help. But other than those gripes, the game is set up nicely in terms of uh, class balancing and team play. Once you try the game out, you'll notice that how rock, paper, scissors it actually is, and um, it really makes it fun to play with a team like that, even though it's all random. That's definitely something I like about it. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching. If you're looking for more information about the game, like always, you can head over to the game profile at MMOHUD.com. Until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.